Ever since Raiden began working for Supreme Calamitous, he had found purpose in his life. He now had a singular goal to gain power by killing bosses until he could be strong enough to summon Supreme Calamitous. And fortunately for Raiden, killing bosses was something that came very naturally to him. Supreme Calamitous had given Raiden so much already, so he was determined to prove, at whatever cost, that he was deserving of her trust. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Death Mode playthrough episode. We are playing as Raiden the Rogue, using only rogue weapons. In last episode, we defeated the Eater of Worlds and the Sulfurous Sea Acid Event. And now we've got the Sulfurous Armor, and we've got lots of awesome stuff that we can do this episode. I definitely want to do some boss fights and do some more exploring of our world because we still haven't explored a lot of the map on the right hand side. So I definitely want to do that. And as you can see right here, the base is looking different because we have the solar background and I think it looks so cool. A lot of people had actually recommended bringing these solar monoliths in and I'm glad you did because I think it looks really good versus having the overworld background like the forest biome background up here and I added one in the base down here as well right there and that way it stays the solar background all around our base. Another thing I did between episodes was buy a shark tooth necklace and that's from Alexander. He sells all sorts of accessories and he kind of gets more accessories as you progress through the game. And now that we have the shark tooth necklace I may pair that with the micro root and I think that could be a pretty good combination and make us increase our DPS a ton against the hive mind because that's definitely a boss I want to fight this episode. Another thing I wanted to show is that we can actually buy beach teleporters and jungle teleporters now and that's sold from the alchemist NPC and these are so amazing. They're a bit pricey but quite handy so I'm definitely going to buy a few of these and that will make getting to our sulfur sea a lot easier and we'll probably need to start doing some farming for gold soon. I may try doing the Armageddon farming method after defeating the Hive Mind when we've got some better items or something. I used one of our beach teleporters and here I am in the Sulfurous Sea biome and I want to go explore a little bit because I seem to remember there being some chests down here that I didn't get. I saw them during the editing process and here's one right here and I wanted to see what other stuff we can get from this biome because there's definitely lots of new items that I've never seen before. Oops, we just woke up the Aquatic Scourge, so I think it's time to head back. Well, I think we got all the chests in this biome from the areas we've explored. There might be something down here that we can check out sometime. So we have the broken water filter, and this disables natural acid rain spawns. That's actually really handy, so I'm definitely going to hold on to that. This is really cool. The Effigy of Decay. When placed down, nearby players can breathe underwater. This effect does not work in the Abyss. Nearby players are immune to sulfuric poisoning. We'll definitely have to keep this because this will make exploring the Sulfurous Sea so much easier. Now I think it's time to start exploring this side of our map and head on over to the jungle. We definitely need to get some items from the jungle to upgrade our specter boots. That would be pretty good. Whoa, we have another cave entrance over here. That's good to know about. They're right beside each other. This would have been a great place to spawn. Several people have asked me in the comments if I've seen the next update trailer for Calamity. And I actually watched that the other day and it looks so cool. The rust and dust update that's I think 1.4.5. So for this new rust and dust update, if it comes out while we're doing Raiden the Rogue, I'll definitely update to it and try to do as much of the new content as I can. Oh, we have the Eternia Crystal guy, the barkeep. Whenever there's a new update, I like to try to get it as soon as possible, even if we're mid playthrough. And then I'll also probably be doing lots of showcase videos showing the new content and all sorts of stuff when it comes out. New weapons, all that sort of thing. Or updated weapons, because I know a lot of weapons are getting an update, like the EXO weapons. So yeah, lots of really cool stuff coming up. Oh my goodness. I did not see that explosive. Oh my gosh, another trap. There's a boulder over here. Man, this is a treacherous entrance to our jungle. So like I was saying, I'll definitely be doing lots of showcase videos showing off the new weapons and all the new stuff for the Rust and Dust update, which is pretty exciting. Ooh, sweet. We have a little shrine right here. And we got the Feral Claws. 
It's pretty awesome using the shark tooth necklace with this weapon. I feel like it's really improved. Um, I'm going to put some of our stuff in auto trash. It's doing so much damage now. And I love the easy way to light up rooms with it. Man, this jungle is so lucrative. We found two houses almost immediately. And we've got the second jungle shrine over there. Another thing I wanted to mention is that there is a Discord server for this channel. Ooh, an Anklet of the Wind. That's what we were looking for. And for the Discord server, there's a link in the description of all the videos. And it's definitely a really fun place to hang out. And I try to jump on the Discord a few times a week or even, you know, sometimes daily and just chat for a little bit. And uh, we've got world downloads for the different playthroughs, all sorts of good stuff. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Another thing I just remembered is that somebody mentioned this Meteor Fist is really good for exploring. And it definitely is. It shoots off so many fire effects that you can see everything below you. Ooh, looks like we found a tree with a chest here and another anklet of the wind. Nice. Oh my goodness, I think we found another tree right below it. Yeah, this is insane. I have not had such a lucky jungle spawn before. Ooh, we got a staff of regrowth. I actually really like that. It's quite helpful for building arenas. It looks like our inventory is pretty much full here. So I think I'll probably just kill these enemies and then call it good and head back to base. Well, this is kind of a funny look. We have the solar event with the balloons at the same time. Now that we have the Anklet of the Wind, we can craft our lightning boots. So that's pretty good. We should be able to craft the ice skates. Although I think we may need to craft an ice machine first. So in order to craft ice skates, we just need leather, ice blocks, and iron. And now we can craft the Frostbark boots with our lightning boots and ice skates. It feels pretty good to have some extra speed now on our boots. So let's try re-rolling it. Yeah, we don't have nearly enough gold. It costs like 15 to re-roll this. So we have it rolled too quick right now, and that's probably good enough for the moment. Well, I think it's time to head over to the corruption biome, and we can try fighting the next boss, which is the hive mind. It's a pretty fun fight, and the hive mind unlocks several items like uh, aerialite, which craft into, I think, two rogue weapons and a new rogue armor set. Now we just need to wait for... Oh, we don't have to wait. It's already spawned. Okay, excellent. Well, then let's do this. I know this can be a pretty challenging boss fight, especially in death mode, so I definitely do not want to underestimate this guy. And hopefully we can do well. I'm actually nervous. There we go, adrenaline. Let's try to make the best of the adrenaline. We definitely have to watch out for those rain clouds. And then when it circles us, you have to be careful not to like move too much. Okay, we're doing all right. Let's maybe pop a heal. And if we're running across the arena like this, it seems to work pretty well. As long as we get out of those acid clouds, we're pretty good. Man, what I really need is that fungus rod from Magnus the Mage. That made this boss fight so easy. Well, this is actually going fairly well. I was kind of expecting the worst, but I've got kind of the patterns down. The boss does pretty distinct movements, and so you can kind of tell what it's going to plan on doing. Okay, two seconds until a heal. Looks like it's going to do the rain. We got a heal now. Yeah, having a big arena for the corruption bosses helps so much. And we almost have it. Uh-oh, we're caught in the rain. This is not good. 
Oh no, what's happening? I don't wanna lose this. Gotta be super careful. No, why am I why am I messing up? Why am I messing up? No! Oh my gosh. We still got him even though we died. What the heck? I guess we had some sort of damage. I think the Luxor's gift scorpions killed him or something cuz he was so close to dying and we still got him. I cannot believe it. Okay, we got to go back and get our loot. That was such a crazy ending for that boss fight. Yeah, that was weird because I was actually doing quite well and I was thinking it was kind of easy, but then all of a sudden I started making lots of mistakes right at the end. Well, we just picked up all the loot and let's see what we got. Whoa, <laughs> we got so much stuff there. Well, we have the filthy glove, which says stealth strikes have plus 10 armor penetration and deal 10% more damage. So it can be upgraded with hallowed bars later on and it's then able to upgrade to nanotech eventually. Pretty cool. I'll definitely keep it, but I may not use it that often because I don't really do too much stealth, especially during boss fights. It's not really that practical because I'm just always attacking. We have the rotten brain, pretty cool. We also have the dank staff and the shadow drop staff. We also have the shade thrower, the leeching dagger, and the perfect dark. Man, so many cool items. So the hive mind lore says place in your inventory for all projectiles to inflict cursed flames while in the corruption. And then it says, however, enemy spawn rates will be greatly reduced while in the corruption due to your overwhelmingly putrid odor. Interesting. Yeah, it does do cursed flames. That's actually pretty powerful. In fact, maybe we'll go ahead and defeat the hive cyst once more. And that way we can try to get some more of the items. And we can also test out the cursed flames. Plus, I feel a little bit weird that we died right at the end of that boss fight. So I'd rather do it again and survive. Okay, here we go. The boss fight has begun. Well, this is going pretty well. We've done some pretty good damage. And so far we still have a decent amount of health. He's down to 38%. Okay, well, down to 15%. I'm getting pretty low on health, though. Hopefully we can finish this off. Oh, no. We're getting so close. Oh, that was lucky. We missed all of the rain. Oh, no. We fell, we fell down below. What is happening? This is not good. This is really not good. <laughs> yes, we still beat him. That was so scary. When I fell down into the tunnel, I had to make a quick decision because I could try to jump out and maybe we would get lucky and be able to miss some of the attacks, but I think I would have died. So I had to kind of just go with it and bring the fight down into this arena. I'm kind of glad I had this arena now. Okay, well, let's take a look and see what we got in our treasure bag. Here we go. We can craft the Rot Ball. It's got 51 rogue damage. Sweet. Let's craft a few of those. One thing I wanted to do is craft the Corrupt Altar. This is actually a Louis AFK crafting recipe. You just need to have Demonite, Ebonstone, and Shadow Scales. So if we craft that, we might be able to use the Corruption Altar in our magic storage. So let's see if we can do that. Yes, now we don't have to find a demon altar because we have it as part of our crafting stations. And let's just craft pretty much as many of these rot balls as we can. Sweet, we've got 1,900. That should be more than enough. Now that we've defeated the hive mind, we've got aerolite all over our world. So I think it's time to use a night owl and a spelunker. And we can go look for some aerolite. Here's what aerolite looks like. And it's quite a plentiful resource. It's very easy to find. Oh my goodness, there's so many crabs. There's like a switch right here and they keep jumping on the switch and summoning more. Well, we've already got about 200 aerolite and there's just so much all over the place. 
So with Aerialite, we'll be able to craft a new armor set, which I'm not sure is going to be better than the Sulfurous armor. So we'll have to compare those. And then we can also craft a Javelin and I think like a throwing knife or something. We are back at base and I just put away all of our stuff and now we can craft Aerialite bars. So let's do a whole bunch of those. And I think we're going to need to craft a sky mill because we don't have one of those yet, but that should be pretty simple. So we craft that and we can put it in here. And now we should be able to start crafting some stuff. Although I think we're missing feathers. Let's see if this is a better pickaxe than what we've got here. It actually is. Okay, well, then let's craft that. So another thing I realized is we can use a bottle right here and now it looks like we can craft some potions. So let's craft some battle potions. We definitely need a few of those. So maybe five and that will help quite a bit as we farm up some harpies. Well, here we are in the corruption biome and we have the sky island above us. So we just need to build this little rope tower and we'll be able to farm up some harpies. Well, I think we've collected about enough feathers. One thing that I really like about the Rot Ball is that it arcs the same way as the Luxor's Gift, and so the projectiles are right on top of each other, which makes it really effective. You can see with other weapons like the Meteor Fist, the Meteor is going much farther than the Luxor's Gift, but with the Rot Ball, they're exactly the same. And it actually seems like I'm earning Rot Balls somehow by throwing them. Like, I have 2,000 when I started with 1,900. I think, for some reason, you pick up more than you throw or something. Now that we're back in our base, let's go ahead and craft the Feather Knife. And I'm going to craft quite a few. And we have this Javelin, the Turbulance, and it looks pretty sweet. So let's get one of those. And we can also craft the Aerospec Armor. So let's do all of that. When I'm using the Sulfurous Armor... I've got 40 defense and my knives do 61 rogue damage. And then if we put on aerospec, I have 39 defense, but the knives do 58 rogue damage. So I lose defense and I lose some damage. But let's see what the set bonus is because maybe it's worth it for the set bonus. So it looks like we get a bunch of rogue damage, movement speed, more movement speed. Taking over 25 damage in one hit will cause a spread of homing feathers to fall. It allows you to fall more quickly and disables fall damage. I can definitely see what it's referring to about fast fall speed. There's a lot to like about Sulfurous Armor, and I definitely worked quite hard to get it, so I think I may stick with it for now. Another thing we could get is the Harpy Ring. It increases movement speed by 20%. And let's give that a try. I don't really see the movement speed change that much. Like, I definitely feel faster. But yeah, maybe if we put on Aerospec and the Harpy Ring, we'd be moving even faster. But I don't know, it's not really that useful, I don't think. But eventually, this Harpy Ring will combine with the Frostbark Boots to form the Angel Treads. That's kind of like the Calamity version of the Terra Spark Boots. This Javelin is amazing. This is so cool. It shoots out all these spinning, like, Typhoons or something. Let's see what it says. It says that it fires a cloudy javelin that bursts into wind slashes on hit. Wind slashes home if the javelin crits. And it says that stealth strikes are trailed by homing wind slashes. And that's what it's talking about right there. That is really cool. Ooh, and we even have a pig to try it out on. Okay, this is pretty sweet. It's definitely doing some pretty good damage. And I love that it attacks so quickly and it can hit all the way across the screen because that's one thing that I didn't like about my boomerang is that it just didn't have the range I was looking for. Yeah, the feather knife looks really sweet. It rains down feathers and then those feathers explode. These items look absolutely amazing and I think it's time to craft an Armageddon. And what this does is it makes you die instantly if you get hit while a boss is alive. But if you are able to kill the boss, then you'll get six treasure bags instead of just the one. I just bought a few medallions, and so I'm thinking of turning on Armageddon. So bosses will instantly kill me, and then we can summon the Desert Scourge. And hopefully we'll be able to defeat it without getting hit. I really don't want to mess up on it. No! 
<laughs> oh no. Oh, uh, I jinxed myself. Okay, let's try that again. And hopefully we can do it this time. Okay, we're taking it out a little bit faster. We just gotta make sure we don't get hit by one of those random stray projectiles. Ooh, like those right there. There we go. And that's gonna be six treasure bags. Right there. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, we already have so much stuff. Well, let's head back to base and sell some of it. That was quite the efficient way to farm up gold. We got about a platinum just from fighting one desert scourge there. So let's go ahead and try this again. And hopefully we can kill him again. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and kill him a few more times. And let's go ahead and start opening all this stuff up. Ooh, I just got an armor deep diver. That is interesting. Increases damage, defense, and movement speed when underwater. While underwater, you gain the ability to dash great distances. That is so cool. This is insane. We have three platinum and 91 gold. And that didn't even take us more than like 10 minutes. Another thing we can do now is craft our upgraded alchemist charm and it's a tier two. We just need the demonite, shadow scales, and our tier one. And what that will do is it will allow us to get a better discount on the alchemist stuff. And another thing we can craft is the fish finder. Now that we have all the different fishing items from farming up that boss so many times. And then we've got the angler tackle box that we can craft. Another item that we can craft is the silencing sheath. And what that does is 20 maximum stealth and stealth generates 15% faster. So it looks like it combines into something else later on. So I pretty much spent all of my gold on potions and I tried reforging a little bit, but for potions, we've got a few really useful ones, mainly the warmth and the obsidian skin. That will protect us from cold and protect us from heat. So we can go into the sky and into the underworld and all that. And then I also have Endurance and the Bounding Potion, Night Owl, and Nature's Blessing. So those will be all good ones to have. I think this is a great place to end this episode. We've got lots of cool new items and accessories. I still am really excited to try out this Deep Diver accessory. I didn't even know that was a thing. And we had two really exciting fights against the Hive Mind. That was a ton of fun. Next episode, we'll probably be able to defeat the Queen Bee and Skeletron, so that'll be really fun. I know there's lots of good upgrades to get once when we defeat Skeletron. And that's it for this episode. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.